and welcome to another video. It's just going to be a quick one today comparing the Strathmore Bristol 300, which is what I usually use for my human portraits, um, the Fabriano Artistico hot press paper and the De La Roni Bristol board. Now straight off the bat we can see that these are very different tonally. Um, the Fabriano hot press is a lot more yellow than the Strathmore Bristol board. Now I did always think that the Strathmore Bristol board was quite yellow toned but putting it next to this Fabriano hot press paper it's clear that the Fabriano is much more cream toned so um, if you're not a fan of that I steer clear of this paper but I'm not too I don't hate it but I would prefer brighter white now I'm going to be coming at this from the standpoint of um, a graphite artist and I'm an animal artist so there's going to be particular strokes that I'm using so starting off with the Strathmore Bristol board, I'm going to try my tapered stroke technique, which is what I use for the hairs. As you can see, this paper is... I've always loved this paper, it's very nice to work on. It's very smooth, as most Bristol boards are, because this is the Bristol board smooth, not the vellum, just keep that in mind. And it's taken the, the hair strokes very nicely. Very smooth feel to it. There's no tooth on that paper at all. Smooth on the lines. It's really gliding with my hand as well. And the way the paper feels under your hand is also really important, so. You've got to enjoy working on the paper. So next we are on to the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press Watercolour Paper. I actually picked this one up for colour pencils, which is what most people use it for. So to use it for graphite is very new to me, but I saw it mentioned on a blog post that this was the artist's favourite paper to work on with graphite pencils. This paper also comes in huge rolls, and I'm looking for a large paper for a commission that I've got, which is A0. And um, it's quite hard to find paper that comes in sizes large enough. So I thought I would try this out with some graphite. It's a really nice paper, actually. It's got a very... It's got a lovely texture to it. It's not... You can almost feel that it's cotton based paper because it's so smooth under your hand and it's um, it does take strokes very nicely, it's very smooth I've got to say. For the texture, because it looks very it looks a lot more textured than the Bristol board. But because of that texture you're able to get um, a real large tonal scale on there. So I'm just kind of working how I would normally do if I was building up some fur layers. And yeah, it feels nice underhand. So on to the next one, which is the De La Roni Bristol board. This one is bright white, which is one of its biggest pluses. However, this really isn't my favorite paper at all as it's, it's almost too smooth. It's lovely for pen work, if you're an ink pen artist, but for um, graphite and the kind of work I do, there's just not enough tooth there to kind of grab onto the graphite and give you some nice deep tones. It's very surface level. I've used this paper before and it also kind of peels up a little bit if you start blending too much or just general drawing practices really. But as I said it's very nice for pen, um, but it's not my favourite for graphite work for animals. So as you can see there, we have the sma Smashmore Bristol, <laughs> Strathmore Bristol paper and then we have the Fabriano and the De La Roni. I think in the in the hair stroke test the Strathmore Bristol wins first place. Next up we have got some blending methods. Now 
I use two blending tools. I use the paper stumps and I use the silicone sh colour shaper tool. So let's see how the Strathmore Bristol handles each tool. So I've just got a solid block of tone down here. And now I'm going in with the paper stump. As you can see, the Strathmore Bristol is very smooth for blending. That's why I love it for human portraits because you can get some really nice smooth skin tones on there. So it's taken the paper stump blending very well. Then do three layers of blending on each one because that's kind of as far as you'd go with normal use. So that's lovely and smooth still. So we have a smooth result there with the blending stump. And now let's try the Fabriano Artistico paper. This definitely has a lot more tooth than the Strathmore Bristol board. So that's probably going to reflect in this stage quite a lot. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but there's really tiny little specks that come up when you work on the surface of this paper. It's not a big deal, you can just brush them away, but I would prefer that that didn't happen because it's annoying having to keep brushing it. So the same paper stump here, really blending that in. The brushing is annoying. It does happen with the Bristol board sometimes as well, but this one is definitely more intense with the bits that come off the paper. So I would never use this paper for human portraits, because trying to achieve a smooth tone isn't the easiest. You can kind of see some of the specks there. It also feels like it's a bit more work to blend into the surface. Whereas with the Strathmore Bristol, it's very um, easy to do. Try not to be biased here because the Strathmore Bristol is what I work on normally. But I really do want to find some different paper that I can use as well. So if anyone knows any paper that comes in like big rolls and is really good, just let me know and I'll try that as well. <laughs> so there we have the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press. Um, the difference between the two, I would say, you can definitely see that this is more textured and this is a lot smoother, but we knew that already. So yeah, I'd say that they're pretty nice. This one is definitely not one that I'd use for human portraits and skin tones, but for animal art, let's see how it does. So, onto the De La Roni now. And let's go in with the H pencil. Layer one. Now this paper I know already isn't very good for blending. It's um it doesn't really blend into the surface because it is such a smooth paper. Any kind of dents or strokes that you do slightly too hard are gonna stay like all here. You can still see the strokes of the pencil, which you can't see on the other two really. Layer number two. It's already feeling like it's not going to take this very well. But 
the paper almost feels like it's shiny because it's so, it feels like you've done like a few layers of graphite on it already and it's got that shiny kind of feel to it. If any of you use this Daily Rony Bristol and you managed to get it to work really well, let me know in the comments. Because I do know a few people that use it with some success. But personally for my style it's not the one. So there's an overview of the three different, the exact same technique in the three different places there. So I'm now going to go in with a second blending tool which is the silicone colour shaper. Now this is a tool that blends more on the surface level of the paper whereas the paper stumps blend into the tooth so this one kind of blends it into the paper whereas the silicone blends it on top. So I'm going to do the exact same test with a few layers of the H pencil. out with a silicone, oh that already had some graphite on there so that went a bit darker than it would if it was clean. Layer 2. So that's that and let me just blend a little bit out of a cotton bud and here is the how it takes cotton bud blending which is where there's already some graphite on the end of the cotton bud and I'm just using that to get some light tones in. This hot press paper does feel very high quality, I'll give it that. Very thick and I'll be happy to give this to a client for a commission. So here we go with the silicone tool. This takes the silicone tool really well. It looks smoother than it does on the Strathmore Bristol. These are all tests that I do if I ever get a new paper. Before I start on a commission or anything, I will always do all of these tests just to make sure it's going to be enjoyable and suitable to work on. So yeah, that actually looks very smooth compared to the Strathmore Bristol. Hmm. Impressed with that test there. So now we have the De La Roni. The silicone tool will be better for blending on the De La Roni because it is a surface blender rather than a tooth, a toothy blender, if you get what I'm saying. So, because the De La Roni Bristol is so smooth, it'll work better with a surface blender. It's so patchy and I just, I'm not a fan. But I want to give it a chance in this comparison just because it is a bright white alternative to most Bristol papers which have a cream tone. So there's that. Oh, I forgot to do the, forgot to do the cotton bud test. So this one is going to grip onto the cotton bud because the tooth is there a little bit more, it's going to grip onto the cotton bud pigments, anything that's on there, a lot more than the smooth Strathmore board. So that's a darker result than on the Strathmore. And here we have the De La Roni. 
and as you can see it's really hard to get any pigment off the end of that but that might be something that's good if you're desiring a very smooth light effect so that would actually be quite nice for human portraits because you can build it up slowly okay so the next test is going to be with the rubber pencil now I use these a lot um, just to pick up highlights within the fur so let's see how it performs taking some light pigment off the surface of these papers standard there. It's not the smoothest result when you zoom in. Um, you can see a lot of texture underneath the rubbings out. So let's try the Fabriano. seems a lot harder to rub the pigment off the surface and it is a little bit more textured hmm yeah that didn't perform as well as the Strathmore Bristol for this method so now the De La Roni. Yeah, I did expect that this would be the best for this because it is such a smooth surface, it's quite easy to pick up the pigment again. I keep saying pigment, um, I think it is just graphite. Pigment is for colour pencils. Um, but yeah, as you can see, that's the smoothest result of three for that method. Uh, and that is because the surface is the most smooth. We have got an 8B pencil and we're going to see how dark we can get. pretty nice there, very smooth, very nice to blend with just with a pencil. And here we have the Fabriano. It feels like it's more effort to get a darker tone, but it also feels like this paper will get much darker without any issues, so it's, it's more effort but it seems like it will take more layers and therefore achieve a darker result. And the Daily Roni. I have to say this does feel pleasant to blend in this way. I would definitely use this this paper for like just sketching and but for a commission I wouldn't use this so there we have it they're all pretty dark I would say that the Fabriano looks like it's going to take much more layers and get darker and it also I don't know if you can see that but um, the shine of the pencil the pencil shine looks a little bit less on here than it does on here so that's something to note this black, I think it's, I can't remember, it's like a wax based pencil or an oil based pencil, it's just a black one, it's kind of like a um, black colouring pencil and I sometimes use this for really deep tones in my work if I need like a, a step down from the darkest shade I can get with a graphite pencil. much more toothy. <laughs> I'm not a fan of tooth when you can see it through the paper. Obviously that's a really good option for coloured pencils though because you need that. You need those layers of paper to hold onto the pigment. This paper doesn't take the black pencil that well over the top. It's 
just kind of fighting with the graphite to get onto the surface. And I'm now going to use the cotton bar just to see how well these dark areas blend out. I'm very interested about the blending on this paper. It looks like it's going to be an absolute dream for getting those really small details with a sharp pencil and building up loads of layers but smooth blending isn't as easy. I'll just get a new cotton bud so it's a fair test. test I'm going to be doing is how well they perform with the jelly roll pens which I use a lot for really fine details, fine highlights in the eyes. Rolling the pen out to make sure the ink's flowing nicely and let's try some. I didn't mean to do a smiley face then but it just came naturally. <laughs> so yeah that holds on to it just fine. feels a lot nicer to work on this paper with the white pen. There's less scratchy bits than on the Strathmore and I think that's probably because the tooth is higher. But I'd say the De La Rona is definitely the best for pen work because this feels really good with the pen. So there we have it guys, there is the roundup of these three papers. I think for the sake of the the way I work and just the kind of the balance of techniques that I use, the Strathmore Bristol 300 is going to take it for this test. Now the Fabriano Hot Press would definitely be better for you if you're working with like colour pencils or watercolour of course because it's a watercolour paper, but the De La Roni Bristol I would say saves that for your sketches and pen work if you're a pen artist would be really nice for that but the Strathmore Bristol is definitely taking the cake for this test I'll be coming back to you with some more paper tests in the future so subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one guys